Hello everyone, welcome to AS Biology with Dr. Demi. I am Dr. Demi and in this video I will be concluding chapter 8 of the AS Biology syllabus which is the cardiac cycle. So if you haven't watched the previous videos in chapter 8, we are discussing transport in mammals and obviously we can't discuss that without having anything to do with the cardiac cycle because the heart is a very important organ in ensuring that we're able to transport blood successfully successfully around the body. So let's just get into it um, and I hope you find it helpful. So first things first is that you need to know, and I hope you've done this in school, um, that is dissected the heart. Uh, this is something that my students have to do as part of this class, uh, or part of this topic rather. They open up the heart, um, sheep hearts, and they're able to see that the heart has four chambers and it also has a number of valves. So if you look here, I'm just going to use a pen um, to circle around or use a red pen as usual. Um, if you look here, there's um, a bit of a, a closing here. That's actually a valve in itself over here. And there are also some valves that lead uh, between here and there. But I'll show you that in more detail later. What you need to know is that there are four chambers in the heart. One, this chamber on the left here is called the left atrium. Again, please note that the heart is now facing us um, in this slide. So that is why the left atrium is where it is, because you might be thinking, but that's on my right. Um, so think of it as you're looking at it in a mirror. So this is the left atrium. Um, over here is the left ventricle. So this is the left side of the heart. And this is the right side of the heart. So it has another atrium and another ventricle. The best way for you to be able to easily identify which part is the left or the right is to look at the thickness of the walls um, here. On the left side of the heart, the wall is quite thick and you can see it goes all the way. But when you come to the right side uh, by the atrium and the ventricle, you will find that the wall is a bit thinner. So that's another way that you can identify it. The valves that exist between the atrium and the ventricle are called the atrioventricular valves, which is very easy to decipher if you just look at the fact that it is made up of the word atrium. Um, so that's atrium and then obviously you take uh, take out the um and you replace that with an o and the ventricular valve so that's the atrioventricular valve the one on the left is called the bicuspid valve while the one on the right is called the tricuspid valve so i often tell students when you think of tri just think of the fact that those three letters are in the word right and that might help you remember that the tricuspid valve is on the right you also have what we call the semilunar valve valves and the semilunar valves basically exist between the ventricle and the pulmonary artery as well as the that's the right ventricle and the left ventricle and the aorta so something to bear in mind when we discuss transport in mammals is to always remember that the aorta carries blood away from the heart and it is on the left side of the heart while the um, vena cava brings blood back to the heart and it's on the right side. The vena cava is not in this image here, but um, if you look at images of the heart, you'd be able to see it. Something else I need to draw your attention to is this thick wall over here called the septum. Uh, the septum is a thick wall that separates the left side of the heart from the right side. So obviously the question is how then does blood flow from the right side to the left side or from the left to the right? Because the septum doesn't open Open. It's not a wall that opens up or anything like that. And that is something we are going to learn now as we discuss the cardiac cycle. Before we go into the cardiac cycle in detail, something you must know is that there are two words um, that describe the cardiac cycle. We have a word we call the systole. The systole simply means contraction. And we have what we call the diastole, which means relaxation. You should also know that the heart on average beats at 70 times per minute or beats for 70 times per minute in a continuous cycle of systoles and diastole. And that is what we're going to look at on the next slide. So these are the phases of the cardiac cycle. As a matter of fact, this is all I show my students in class and they then have to like draw their own conclusions and make their own notes. But in this video, I think I explain a little bit more um, than I would with the students because, well, you know, they're used to me. Um, so the first phase of the cardiac cycle is called the atrial systole. Um, this is spelled wrongly. Sorry about that. This should be atrial. 
not atrial. So that's the atrial systole. And the atrial systole is basically the contraction. Again, remember the word systole means contraction. So it means contraction of the atrium or the atria. That's the plural for atrium. It means contraction of the atria. So the atria would force blood into the vesicles, um, into the ventricles when it contracts. Um, and you can see here from the arrows that the blood from the atria, which are on top, are forced into the ventricles. And then you would have what we call the ventricular systole. The ventricular systole means ventricle contraction. So the ventricular contraction will close the valves between the atria and the ventricles. So it closes the atrioventricular valves, which are called the AV valves. Once those valves are closed, when the ventricles contract, it means that blood doesn't go back to the atrium, but rather blood takes a different direction. And that is why you can see that the ventricular systole is separated into two phases. At the the first phase, once the contraction starts, the atrioventricular valves will close. That is the valves between the atria and the ventricles. Once those valves are closed, then the semilunar valves, which are between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery, the left ventricle and the aorta, will open and that then pushes the blood into those two vessels um, to carry around the body. You will also then see that afterwards we go into the ventricular systole where the semilunar valves will close, blood will flow into the atria and then the chambers relax and the blood simply fills up the atria and also starts to go into the ventricles and this way the cycle repeats itself. If this has seemed a little bit confusing, I have an outline on the next slide that I'm going to show you just now. So here it is, the cardiac cycle outline. So you have the atrial systole. Again, this is what happens. There is blood in the atria. So these are the atria here, um, the top vessels. There, there is blood there, and once the atria um, contracts, which is the atrial systole, that pressure would push the blood into the um, ventricles which are at the bottom so it means that the atrioventricular valves will open and blood is pushed into the ventricles once blood is pushed into the ventricles you can always summarize it you don't have to use the extended explanation on the image I just showed you you can always just summarize it and say that the atrioventricular valves will then close and the ventricles will contract now as the ventricles contract the blood will then flow through the semilunar valves so you can see over here the semilunar valves are labeled so instead of the blood going back up to the atria where it came from it goes through the semilunar valves into the pulmonary artery or into the aorta which is this huge um, blood vessel over here Afterwards, you would have the ventricular diastole where the muscles relax, the pressure in the ventricles will drop, and then blood will enter the atria from the veins that bring blood to the heart. Um, so that is all that you need to know about the cardiac cycle. It's not very difficult. I know it can, be, it can seem a little bit difficult, which is why I say it is important for you in class to dissect a heart so that you are able to see it and also able to visualize the cardiac cycle. That if I squeeze on the atria at the top that obviously pushes blood down to the bottom if I push on the blood at the bottom but the valves are closed between the atria and the ventricles that forces the blood to take a different direction through the semilunar valves to the aorta and also to the uh, pulmonary artery so how is the heartbeat controlled? Um, something you should know is that the heart is a myogenic muscle, which means that it contracts automatically. It doesn't wait to receive an impulse. That is very different from how we, um, how our other cells react or our nerve cells. So for example, your muscles just don't start contracting for no reason. They contract in response to a, an impulse that has reached them. The heart, on the other hand, doesn't need to receive a message in order to contract it contracts on its own and as a result of that it is called a myogenic muscle so the big question and why this question is important is that if the heart is able to contract on its own how is the heartbeat controlled how is it that you hear that double um, sound the duh, 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 that you hear when your heart is beating why doesn't it just go haywire sometimes um, and beat in in some random beat that you don't understand the reason for that is what we will look at on the last two slides. 
So like I said earlier, the cardiac muscle is myogenic. It can contract, it contracts on its own without receiving any form of impulse. And again, we can't just leave all the different muscle fibers to contract at their own will. So the cardiac cycle is initiated specifically in a specialized muscle. And this muscle is in the right atrium. This muscle is also called the sinoatrial node or sometimes called the san. It's also called the pacemaker. Now, I'm sure if you've watched a lot of movies or medical series you've probably heard of them saying things like we need to put a pacemaker in this person's heart and um, the point of the pacemaker is that it simply initiates the cardiac cycle and allows for those events that we've discussed in terms of the atrial systole um, the ventricular systole and the ventricular diastole to occur in sequence so that it then initiates again so the heartbeat is controlled in that manner and the way the sand is able to do this or the pacemaker is able to do this is that it sends excitation waves from the right atrium um, to the left atrium and those waves then spread down to the ventricles however the waves just don't spread out the way that they wish they spread out through a particular um, muscle or fiber called the atrioventricular node that's called the AVN and the AVN will then pass the wave to the conducting fibers which are made up of porcine tissue and that would help spread the waves to the ventricles. In other words, what the heart is doing is that it has created a pathway through which the excitation is able to travel through and result in the contractions or relaxations as necessary. And this is how the heartbeat is controlled. This is the last slide um, for chapter 8 and that is just electrocardiograms. I have seen a couple of questions asking students to just label the graphs and sort of say what they mean and so I thought it would be necessary to let you know here that when we say there's an excitation wave that is actually the P wave. That's what it looks like on the electrocardiogram. So if you've watched movies or series or even just documentaries where they're discussing heart issues you will see that there's always a screen next to the bed that's monitoring the heart rate um, or the heartbeat of the person who is in hospital, the patient. And so what they're looking at are these waves. And you always see that when the waves go flat, it means that the person has died. And what that simply tells you is that there has been no excitation wave, which might suggest that the pacemaker has stopped working, the heart has given up. And as a result of that, there is no blood that would be pumped around the body and all the organs will suffer. And that is just the end of it. So the P wave here is the excitation wave um, in the atria. Always think of it, you can also think of it as the atrial systole. Um, the QRS complex is the excitation in the ventricles. You can relate that to the ventricular systole and the T wave is the relaxation, which you can then relate to the ventricular diastole. So yeah, that's it from me on the cardiac cycle. Again, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat, um, in the comment section. I keep saying chat because I'm so used to Zoom calls, but I hope that you've enjoyed uh, this topic. If you have any information to share, also post them in the comments. Thank you for watching and look out for the next video. Goodbye.